Okay, guys, we're going to start uh, today. Sorry, we've been a long time because I was not here, you know. So we didn't do any meeting for a while, but we have to go back. Two things, we have to start today a new session. And second thing, we have to decide for Ramadan. Do you want to continue Ramadan or you want to stop? It's up to you guys. For me, I'm fine either way. So how do you like it to do it in Ramadan? Um, should I put in the group and do voting? It will be done, so mostly it will be done day, day, day time because after photo will be very difficult. So most of the, I think it's going to be done maybe the hour before iftar. So I think the best way, you know, um, I think, uh, let me see here. يعني هو يجري المغرب عم يكون حوالي ستة وشوي ستة وعشرة yeah. five to six مثلا yeah we were thinking doctor if we if we can do it like between ten to eleven uh, at uh, at a pm it will be a good time after salah after everything like before sahur it will be a bit refreshing uh, one hour before iftar usually the people are low mood Ahmed? Uh, 10 to 11 is the best time, I think. Once a week, 10 to 11, like it will be a, a bit refreshing. And before Sahur, it's better than before Iftar. Because even the, the, uh, the timing is different between us and uh, Iftar. Uh, okay, I'll put it like that on the group, see if people suggest or not. I'll put other suggestion. They uh, okay. Sure. Let's start dialysis access today. The problem is dialysis access. Uh, this is a very practical session. And this is what we do in bed and butter. We do a lot of cases every day. So it's, I think it's a very important session. Uh, the problem in dialysis access is no right and wrong answer. You know? Um, so it doesn't mean if they give it to us with the right answers, you know, because I think you can do a different way to access. So let's go through them. But if you find any discrepancy between what we answer, the answer, I think it should be normal. Uh, because sometimes it's what you prefer, you know, what access to, you know. We'll see. Let's go through that question. I think, this, but I think it's a nice session and it's an important session for everyone. So Mohammed, let's start with you. You're already there. Yes, sure, Doctor. The outcome of uh, brachycephalic arterial venous fistula compared to radiocephalic uh, uh, compared to a radiocephalic AV fistula demonstrates uh, a similar one-year primary patency rate between both. B uh, brachycephalic uh, brachycephalic well, AV fistula have a superior uh, one-year uh, primary patency. Yes. Before we go and answer, I think it's an important question. And it's a very good, you know, uh, thing to learn from these questions, you know. And you may see it in your exam because it's a very common question. Uh, which one is better, is radiocephalic or brachycephalic? Does it really make any difference? Does any data show any different or not? Uh, do you have an idea or not? Um, if, uh, I, I know if, if, if both works, like in two weeks, in one year, patency, they are the same. Uh, you know. Yeah, uh, not really. And the other studies showed that the uh, brachycephalic is much better than the radiocephalic because mm -hmm. the, the artery is bigger, you know. So really, if you want to come with uh, something, you have to brachycephalics, you know. Uh, but they always we saw the radiocephalic because young people, you need to keep their options, you know. But for somebody with, uh, with uh, not many options available, don't waste your time. You know, it's like somebody 78 years old, I will go just right away to brachycephalics, you know, because mm -hmm. you know it's better than radiocephalics, you know. But of course, young person, 20, 30 years, no, I do radiocephalic, even though it, I know it's inferior to brachycephalics, but you have to keep their options you know, open. So this is what, what the data showed, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So... 
So this is a common question. So let's say what they said here. Let's so similar, similar one year primary patency rate. No. Uh, no. Uh, brachycephalic AV fistula has a superior one year primary patency rate. Yeah. This uh, is, yes. This is like a study. It's not like that. Yes. So any old yeah. people, as I said, 60 and above, um, yeah, I think I will go with a brachycephalic, you know. Uh, unless if you have like a very prominent radiospheric, radiospheric vein or something like that. But in general, because it's work better, yeah. All right. I think all the answers will be wrong. Uh, early evidence here is superior, because it's and equal. Let's see what they said here. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Advantage of cephalic with a higher maturation rate than maturation, higher biobatency and functional biotency, yeah. Also, it matures faster because the pressure is higher, so your vein is bigger. So usually, yes. if, when you're old people, I'm saying, uh, I like to go to the brachycephalic, you know, by the way, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's go to the second question. Um, who is that, Muhammad? Uh, Muhammad Ahmed? Marhaba, assalamualaikum. Yeah, a uh, 67 year old woman with a chronic kidney disease, stage four, and is sent for evaluation for AV fistula creation. Her vein mapping the Mr. three millimeter cephalic bilaterally in her upper and lower uh, and lower arms and intact palmar arch. She is right handed dominant and she has left sided implantable uh, ICD. The most uh, appropriate arteriovenous uh, axis would be. Okay. Uh, right, break you. Oh, before okay. I said, I mean, the idea from the question not to answer them, you know, the idea okay. from, you know, from them. So I don't want to jump to the answers. <laughs> so they talk about AV fistula. First, they say three millimeters, you know, what the diameter is acceptable for the vein. Usually, three it, millimeter. Huh? Yeah, three is very good, but what's acceptable? Three would be beautiful. Usually, yeah. two and a half is acceptable. 25 millimeter is good. Anything less than 25 really will not work, you know. So, you need to have three, but 2.5, 20, uh, I think it's acceptable, you know. So, three, she has a good vein, right? So, she has a good yeah. vein, 67 years old here, you know. Uh, intact palmar arch, what that mean? They want to tell you she has a good radial pulse also, you know. Um, so radial, radiocephalic could be a good option or bacocephalic, you know, so you have both options, you know, there. Yeah. 67, if you go back to previous question, um, most of the seven are do bacocephalic, but you can do radiocephalic. As I'm saying, in, 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 in access, you cannot see right or wrong. I mean, if you tell me I do radiocephalic, I'll tell you yes. If you do bacocephalic, I'll tell you yes. Uh, both because she has a good vein, she's a good radial artery, she's a good palmar, so you can go both way. The only problem is in this question, which is a tricky, is that they put an I, uh, AICD on the left side, and she is what she's uh, right handed, right? Let me see, yes. mm. she's right handed, okay? But she has so now the question is that. She's an ICD, and we know when you have an ICD, this is going to compromise your outflow, right? Anytime you have a catheter, the central venous system compromises yeah. your blood flow. So now is that the question is, uh, do you put it on the left hand where you have an ICD, or to go we, where, we, where you're running, a problem is that it may get a problem because you may have a central stenosis because of the AICD, or go to the right hand, which is usually the better, but our problem, if you get a steel syndrome, then the problem is the dominant hand, you know, you see? So that's a tricky yeah. question, you know? Um, and in real life, it's different, you know? Uh, again, if you go ahead or you can tell me, I'll go from the left side, because not dominant hand, and I'll do a venogram to be sure it's no stenosis. If you saw, I fix it, it's make, I'll tell you correct. If you told me, no, I'll go to the right side because this is more chance of advantage and the steel syndrome is very rare, you know. Um, especially she has intact palmar arch. You see, they put this one also, you know, this is that. So they want to tell you that palmar arch is intact. So that means Allen test will be negative. So that means yes. they tell you, don't worry about steel syndrome. So try to put it with the other hand, you see. This is uh, the, the trick in the question. The 
In fact, yeah. Balmain House, that means Allen test will be negative. So the patient is very low chance to get steel syndrome. You don't worry about it. It's very to be sure to go to the right hand because the left side is having eyes. I think this will be the answer for this question. Again, um, I mean, again, in, in AV axis, you can do a different way. But in this exam, because they said this scenario, most of people will go to the right side. Okay. 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 So they drinking. Uh, Okay. Who's that? Ahmed is driving. <laughs> so for right arm brachycephalic, <laughs> right brachycephalic fistula, or right radiocephalic, or left brachycephalic, uh, we said that the right the steel syndrome is low, especially that we have intact arch. So right side would be the choice. Or or E venogram. Uh, all right. Well, really, if you look at them, I think all of them is correct. I'm thinking yeah. that all of them. Let me ask Dr. Ali. I mean, he was asked, you know, uh, what he will do. Because, again, you can do venogram, as you said, assess the bishop nose, and then you go with the left side. Or you can go because she has no arm swelling, so you expect that she has no swelling, so you can do with her arm, left arm, radiocephalic or radiocephalic. Because the vein is good, so you prefer radio dependent age, you said 57. You know, so you need to go with a brachycephalic, but you can tell me, okay, 67, some people they consider still young, so let's do it, you know, radiocephalic, and then if it doesn't work, we go brachycephalic. So really all the answers are correct, you see. Um, and if you want to do them, you can do as far as you have a way to defense yourself. Uh, Ali, you are there, Ali? Yeah, I'm here, yeah. I'm following you. Um, I will go with the radiocephalic fistula uh, on the right or the left arm. I don't have any uh, preference of one over, over the other, I think. So, uh, we, we, uh, uh, presence of EICD will not, you think, be a major issue? I don't think so. Yeah, I agree with that. With the high flow, high flow, I don't think it will be an issue. Yeah, I mean, again, I mean, as far as has no arm swelling, that means because if mm. any, where you get some kind of arm swelling, is the way I look at that. If there's no arm swelling, most of it she has a good, you know, she has no stenosis. So if it's not, it means she has good collaterals because she's no arm swelling. Mm. Uh, I agree with that. You know, I don't like to go to the right dominant hand, but I, mm, but any option if you go to the right hand will not be wrong. Again, radiocephalic is very really good. You can go radiocephalic, so it's very really good. You can tell me break is fake because better you can go right. So all answers correct, you know. Oh, no, it was Because they went to the right. Um, you see, it's because the same, what we have said, EICD has a high primary rate failure compared with the contractor arm should be avoided as much as possible. Uh, compared to the constant venogram. But I'm saying this is his opinion. Doesn't mean that this is the right way to do it. I think his exam is different. But I think this is a long question to come to the exam because it's confusing. It's not like straightforward black and white. But anyway, so guys, you learn. Depending how we want to look at it, uh, but you can go either way, I think. But here they want you to go to the right arm radius effect. But in real life, I don't like to use a dominant arm, you know, unless if I be sure that the left hand will not work. So I would do left radius cephalic. If you have a problem, then we go to the right, you know. Even though the steel syndrome is very rare, but still can be, you know, really a major issue if it happens, you know. All right, so let's go to that question three. Abdullah, you take this question. I uh, guess if you have any question, you can ask us. I'm here, Dr. Ali is here. If you have any, don't agree with any what I'm saying, please, guys. Uh, uh, Dr. Samer. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, if there is Burma cath, permanent yes. cath uh, for dialysis, uh, which side, the uh, same ICD or? Uh, I mean, uh, as I said, I mean, it's not really a rule. It's not like I cannot, you cannot do it, you know. I mean, you know, you have higher chance of, you know, you know, you know, problems because Burma cath is the same as we have a stenosis there. Uh, but again, I, I always like to start with non-dominant hand, really, in real life. I always like to start with dominant hand. And if there's any issue, always I can fix it with the ballooning, standing, you know, maybe I can move it, put it on the other side. 
uh, because when you still still like you see we did the patient today we remove his AV graft the guys you know him the guy he did me and you Nasser yes so he had the ischemia you see how his hand you know and yes. this, you know, so so hand ischemia is really really a devastating outcome so you don't want to do it in dominant hand so as I said I mean real life is different was the exam you know the exam they want to pick up the best scenario you know what to do in real life is different you know in real life yes i will still go through there if i have any issue we're not going to have a primary failure you're going to have maybe a chronic you know you know after fissa you may get like arm swelling because that you can go there you can't remove it with the side you can balloon the stenosis i will not jump to the dominant right, uh, to the dominant agree ali uh, I, think, I think if you have to put a permanent catheter, you have to go to the opposite side if you have uh, any other catheters in the in the left side. So I will take the other the other side really. But uh, if there if I, if I have to do uh, an AB fistula, uh, native AB fistula, I will go to the to one of the two sides using the radiocephalic. One point that uh, we have to mention to our fellows is that uh, when you see the, the veins and the arteries in these patients with the renal disease or in the stage renal disease, uh, you see that these arteries are very small, calcified, and the veins are, uh, are small. Uh, so uh, this is uh, an issue that we have to, to put it in mind and to, uh, uh, to use it uh, in our, in our uh, practice and when we have to do uh, an AB fistula. Uh, so when you have to do an AB fistula, I think you can use the radiocephalic as, as much as you can. Uh, as first choice, and you will go to the brachycephalic in the second choice if you have, uh, if you don't have uh, a proper uh, vein or artery, uh, radial artery. Uh, there are many other options that you can use the the uh, uh, basilar vein, or you can use the uh, uh, saphenous veins in situ, or you can. Uh, transpose the uh, saphenous vein and use it as uh, as uh, a pipe bus uh, in the upper in the upper uh, uh, limb or in situ uh, in the lower limb. Ali, uh, the question Nasser asked is that you have patient already has a left permacast. Okay. Yeah. Mm. You remove it about on the other side, or you proceed with the AVX the same side. No, in the same side. I can in the same side. You don't have to remove it, but on the other side. No, no, on the but, same side. And when the fistula uh, functioning, I can remove the the cat. The, axis in the same side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can that. do it in the same side, and I remove the the uh, per, the permanent axis or the the catheter uh, when the fistula is is major. Uh, again, this is a question from Nasser. Yeah. yeah. Again, it's not contraindication you can do. Yes, I mean, your, your fair is a bit higher because you may expect stenosis, but again, you can deal with that. But I don't think it's a contraindication. Of course, yeah. that, and the way they put it, this, no, they wanted to go to the other side, but, but real life is different, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, so, so this is the Good. So let's move to... Mr. I have a question, uh, please. Uh, will this perm cut epsilateral affect the rate of maturation of that brachycephalic fistula? Not the maturation, uh, the patents. The patents. Okay. You cannot go in general. In general, you expect it to have a low patency because I'm sure it's getting catastrophic you know. But every vision is different. You cannot generalize it, you know, because it depends how it's getting gnosis. If he has, this is the first time he has a fistula or he has, I mean, the access when he had many times. Does he have a chronic occlusion or not a chronic occlusion? Does he have a good collaterals? So you cannot generalize it. But in general, if you have a catheter on one side, you expect your beta acid to be lower in general. But it's not a contraindication. Okay. This is why you need to remove it as soon as possible. I mean, if you have a choice to do before you do it, then don't do it in the side you're going to put your AV axis. Like if you have a patient come to you for permacast and you plan for AV axis, put it on the right side. Don't if they already come to you with Actually, a access, you don't have to remove it. That's what I'm trying to, you know, me and Dr. Ali to say. You don't have to remove it 
não? Então, o que ele é ver, 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 Because last week we had similar case uh, suggested by the term. So we put them on the same side. Suggest to put them on the same side? Why? No, it's not a good idea. If you have a choice, no, don't put them on the same side. No. Why you put them on the same side? I mean, you, you, you know, you compromise your float is a heart. No, I will not. Uh, it's already there. I have no problem. I'm not going to take it out. But if I have a choice, no, I put it on the other side. All right. Okay. Dr. Oh. Samer, if you allow me one last question. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. I mean, so, the whole meeting is about questions, guys. Please, more questions. Okay. So, the, considering that patient is having ICD, an indication of ICD is usually low ejection fraction, so low flow state. Mm. So, would that also be um, like contributory factor for, I uh, mean, thrombosis or even to compromise the back flow, the venous flow to the heart, or it doesn't really uh, affect it much? I'll uh, say your question again, sorry. And, uh, I mean, now the ICD is there because mainly the indication for that is low ejection fraction, I mean, 35 okay. ejection fraction. Okay. Now, uh, the patient would have um, low flow state. All right. Okay. His low ejection fraction. Mm. Adding another, adding another, I mean, uh, I mean, a fistula or something, would that uh, be contributory to or give me a hint that this patient might have more, more um, uh, chances of thrombosis or? No, or not, that no, it depends, man. As I said, it depends how is this uh, AICD, AICD affecting your central venous because every, every patient is different. If he has it like for a couple months, but somebody has it for years. He may already have a stenosis or a blockage, so it depends, you know. But in general, anything you have it in the central venous system, it may affect your outcome. Uh, the only problem in this why you need to pick up the surgery, which is doesn't give you a high output, outflow in the graph, because patients already have congestive heart failure, you know. So this way you have to think between should I use a graft or fistula, you know, because mm -hmm. you know, to give to give patient a high flow fistula because if you give high flow fistula you end with uh, you make his congestive heart failure worse. This is the only thing I may think about it, you know. Uh, but, but in general, it's not a contraindication. It, it just it, let me you just tell the patient you have higher higher chance of you know failure, but we have to do what we have to do, you know. I see. Yeah. All right. But Dr. Samer, sorry uh, to interrupt. Uh, if we have ejection fraction usually around 30, 25. Is this uh, a bit re a relative contraindication to put in a fistula with this low ejection fraction? Because, you know, you will worsen whatever heart function he has, right? I don't think, it's, I think it's a relative, but I don't think it's a, you know, yes. But also, I mean, you have to look at the whole things, you know? I mean, yeah. also, permacast, leave on permacast, it also is on issue for giving the cartilitis and all the issues. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this, yeah, I go with a small radiocephalic AV fistula, like, you know, I don't go like to more parts, I go more distal, you have a lo lower, you know, flow in the fistula. I would don't go like to the brachiocephalic or axillo femoral bypass, you know, AV graft, we have a high flow. I try to choose, choose a surgery for him, which is low, you know, with low flow, you know, mm -hmm. radiocephalic fistula or sniff box if he has a good vein, a small, you know, good vein. So you have to go patient by patient, but it's not an absolute contraindication. Unless if you're really bad congestive heart failure, yes, they become contraindication, yes. If it's really, I mean, he's like, he cannot walk and he's right, then yes. Uh, I will not do a fistula, I'll give him on catheters, I'll take my chances. Okay. Uh, right. Ali, uh, I agree with you, I agree fully okay. with you. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? All right, let's go. Somebody read this question or no? Yes, yes, I do. Who's turn now? Nasser, you want to take this question, Nasser? Yes. yes. 52 year old dialysis dependent patient with left internal jugular vein catheter is referred to you for a hemodialysis evaluation. Previous vein mapping showed no vein greater than 2 millimeter in either arm. The patient has known bilateral central venous stenosis and has uh, had the multiple hemodialysis catheter infections. The patient has a history of significant peripheral arterial disease in both lower extremities. The most appropriate plan for future access. Okay, now, so before we go, 
He's a young guy, Fitu, correct? Yes. Uh, he is the health dependent patient's left internal IG catheter. Mm. Okay. With the small uh, veins in the limb. Okay, and the bilateral central venous stenosis. Stenosis and infection, history of infection. Okay, what uh, had the catheter infection? So he had bad, but he has central venous stenosis. Okay. Yes. Peripheral vascular disease. Why did they tell you this one, both lower extremity? I will uh, exclude the lower limb dialysis. We can to tell you don't go do think about, you know, mm. legs. Maybe but, exclude this one. This tell you want you to stay in upper arm. Yeah. The best options, okay? Let's see what they give you the options here. Um, go ahead. Can start one by one. Le placement of femoral vein tunnel catheter. Things are good options? N no, because higher infection. Yeah, it's an infection. We have a catheter, so why should we move from above to low? I mean, you know, makes sense. So this is wrong. Okay. Placement of uh, an upper extremity arterial venous graft. We have a small vein. I don't know. So you can put a graft. Yes. These are possible options, you know, because he has more vein. Yes, you have a central stenosis. You may need to address that, but this is the only option, you know, one of the options. Let's but uh, not not good option because of central venous occlusion. Okay, what other options? Let's hero go. graft. Yes, I mean, but you see, the hero graft is, is a good and yes and no. The problem with the hero graft is I'm saying, any question, you can look at that. You know, hero graft is a nice, but the problem is the failure rate is much higher than regular AV graft because it's very long, you know. And we did couple of King Faisal's. What we found that if patient ran low pressure, this would be thrombosis because it's very long graft. It ran from the brachial all the way down, you know, uh, because they don't get central central stenosis because there's no no central uh, anastomosis, only at the uh, catheters. But if patient run low pressure, they all thrombosis. And thrombectomy is very critical with this. The you know, difficult to do it. Oh, not difficult. It has some trick to do it. You know, it's not like a normal thrombectomy. So when most dialysis patients, they run low pressure, unfortunately. So yes, I mean, it's a good option, but I don't like it to be my first option. I always like to keep Herograph as my last option. If you have a stenosis, if you have an occlusion, I understand. If you have a chronic complete occlusion and chronic occlusion, then yes, I think Herograph would be the best. But if I have a stenosis, why just go on below it and stent it, and then I do uh, give him an graft, you know? So I'm not saying your answer wrong, but you can do it a different way, okay? Yes. So in my real life, in this case, I will go and uh, do an AV graft and I'll do central stenosis. I'll do ballooning or stenting, you know? Uh, yeah. Depends how bad the stenosis. Uh, if it's an occlusion, then I will go with a hilograph right away, yes. If you have a chronic occlusion, then I already have a catheter across the occlusion, then I just convert it to the hero graft, you know. All right, let's go. Next one. Uh, the next one is the hero graft. Okay. So the C, they said to convert it to the catheter hybrid catheter graft, which is a hero graft, so, correct? Yes. Yeah. Have you done guys hero graft in the, at the university? No, uh, in King Fad Medical City. Uh, so. Oh, guys. What, once only, one, oh. one time. Don't have money. No, we did a couple of them. We did maybe around 10 uh, here. And again, I mean, what we found that as long as the pressure is good pressure, it worked fine. But if it's low pressure, they keep from both. You know, it's a problem with them, you know. All right, the next one using the uh, E. Continue using uh, existing left internal jugular vein catheter. No, it's not good because you keep getting. Okay. Uh, the vein map uh, the patient upper extremities and attempt primary arterio, uh, arterio venous fistula. Yeah, I don't think it's a good option because uh, not, it already is between B and C. I mean, yes, yeah. I can graph, but again, I'll have to do address his central stenosis. Yes, venoplasty. graft, okay? All right. Uh, they use a the hybrid graft, you know? Uh, but again, as I said, both options are, are fine, you know. But in real life, I always try to keep a higher hybrid graft as a last option. We cannot fix your sinor, uh, central stenosis. Okay? Any questions? Dr. Samer, should I do it in the same time? Uh, I mean, the 
venoplasty at the same time uh, with the graft or should they do it in two stages? Well, it depends. I mean, how's your setting? You know, if you have a nice setting, hybrid OR, I will do the same setting, you know, because it's easier. I'll do a fem part, I do the break spike AV graft and go through the graft itself. It'd be easier, you know, and you can fix it. If you don't have a good hybrid room setting, then I will attach the venous stenosis first into radiology or somebody or do it first, ballooning, fix it, and then do AV access. You know, but if you already have a stenosis, it's better to be addressed either during or before the procedure. Don't wait after the procedure, you know. Okay? Yes. No more question? All right. Let's go to question four. Uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, this I didn't use. Muhammad, you want to answer this one? That's true. Okay. So a patient uh, presents to the emergency room with persistent bleeding that started while he was sleeping. Okay. On physical examination, the patient has a right brachycephalic uh, arteriovenous fistula that is ulcerated and bleeding. Okay. In addition to compression, the most appropriate management is. Okay. And did you get any of these during your own call or not yet? Because you can't get it during your own call. Actually, I did not have it. No, I have it. Okay. Did you ever see it? Did you still bleed? Uh, yes. They bleed, really bleed. I mean, this is like open the arteries. I mean, they, they swim in the blood, you know? One case was in CCU, and they called us. They did the compression. We approach. I approached them, and there was a really uh, venous, um, ulcerated venous site uh, bleeder that is uh, significant. Yes, but you see, AV fistula or your graft is no venous or arterial. Yes, it's a venous AV fistula, but every the flow is arterial. So you get massive bleeding, you know. And the worst thing happened while you're sleeping because you can die. You can say, sure, you don't know. You are sleeping and you bleed, bleed, and you wake up and you lost your blood, you know? So it, what I want to say, what to say that, what I want to say that when you have uh, bleeding from fistula, take it seriously, guys, okay? Especially if you have an ulceration. If the skin is intact, it's not a big deal. It happens every time, you know, after dialysis, you get the bleed, you put the pressures, you can put a stitch. But when you have an ulceration, that means you have a hole in the skin, or most of a hole in the graft. If you have any, if the bleeding stop, it's just like a bomb. It's just waiting to rupture again. So don't even put the patient for next day, you know? I'll take him to surgery right away as an emergency, you know? Uh, because if you put a pressure and admit him, middle of the night, the nurse will call you, he bleed, he bleed again, you know? So okay. this guy is better to take them as an emergency. Of course, don't send them home for sure, you know. Again, the most important, you have an ulcerated skin, okay? But not every day. Just the bleeding, which happened many times, after that, they get the bleeding because of venous hypertension. You just go there and put a stitch. It's not a big deal. But if you have ulcerated skin, you cannot put a stitch. So no way to fix it. You have to take him for surgery. Okay? Very clear. So let's see what they say. Now here, the first one, they give you the answer. So the, the answer is A. Uh, Take the patient emergently for open surgical revision. Yeah, let's see what that is possible. Well, Lala. What about correct, B? Correct any coagulopathy and give uh, this in person. I mean, I don't think it's not a coagulopathy bleeding. This is a mechanical bleeding. You see, it's not a coagulopathy. It's not a bleeding of coagulopathy. You have an ulceration. You have a hole in the graft, you know? So this yeah. will not. Right? Okay. <laughs> Base stitch and discharge. This is joint. Only if you have an intact skin, but you have no skin here, so you cannot do this one. Okay? Yes. Placement of a covered stent? No. Ah, sounds good. What do you think? Just put a covered what? stent. <laughs> oh, of course uh, not. Why not? It's just considered it's in the vascular solution. You just close the hole and you put a covered stent. It yeah, but it is. Uh, a foreign body that is exposed to the, uh, you know, open skin and an infection and... Uh, That's true. Because you have all the skin. So if you put a cover stain to be exposed to outside, then you get an infection. So it's not a good option. I agree. It could be a good option as a life, you know, if like for some reason you don't have an OR, it's not a play, I mean, as like temporary, you know. For some yes. reason you don't have an OR, you don't have... Uh, I don't know, something like you just have to fix it now, a massive bleeding, you can't stop it. You can put a cover stain, but just a bridge until you take him and fix it, you know? So you can use it as a bridge, but it's not as a treatment, okay? 
Okay. Admission and angiography on the following day. Uh, it is not... Um, yeah, confident. Uh, to help nothing. Angiography will not help in anything. I mean, we know what's the issue. We know the problems, you know. And so I don't think it would help. So the best way you need to take him right away to the uh, open surgical excision, the metabolism graft or whatever you have to do, you have to deal with that, you know. Uh, yeah. All right. Dr. Samir, what if what if a primary, I mean, can we like do it a bit side and fix the thing or the month? No. As I said, it is uh, really, you have a good, good control, proximal and distal, you cannot. I mean, primary, you can put just a stitch to hold until you go to the OR, yes. I mean, it's not difficult to put a stitch here because the skin ulcerated. So you put a pressure dressing and you put an ACE bandage and you tie it. If you're able to control the bleeding, then you call the OR. If you cannot, just put your finger and take him with you. With you. Both guys to go to the war, you know? Okay. Uh, but the most important is that even if, like if they call you on bleeding, stop. And you go to the uh, ER patient, come, you may bleed, and you go and you see ulceration, you see a clot there, and no bleeding. Say, oh, no, it's no bleeding now, you know? Don't send him home. So go home, come to the clinic, no. Or send him to the floor and say, oh, deal with that, no. Because this clot is just waiting to rupture again, you know? It's like a rupture aneurysm, really, you know? So, so sometimes they bleed and stop. But again, if you have acid in the skin, take it seriously. Very clear. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Well, let's go to the. Oh, only there are four. Oof. Well, let's go to five. Go, Hamad. Back to you, Hamad. Yes, doctor. Okay. So, sorry. Here we are. The result of a fistulogram in a patient with left upper extremity anterior penis graft reveals a severe stenosis, a severe outflow venous stenosis. The most appropriate management is? Yeah, this patient has, uh, this is the most common fail reason for failure of a graft, right? Is outflow venous stenosis. This is yes. what's common every time. Uh, so how we deal with that, the venous stenosis? So, uh, A is a covered uh, stent placement. Be done, Muhammad. Uh, well, how we deal with that, you think? If patient has yeah. So, we have to do, uh, we have to diagnose first. We know what in what region is the occlusion Hello. or the stenosis. This is at the Alulak. It's outflow venous. That mean, yeah, it's outflow venous. Eh? They mean yeah. that, the, uh, you know, the anastomosis of the graft was the, the fissure or... It's a graft. Graft, graft. The venous anastomosis. This way yeah. Stint. Yeah, I, I, I will stint it. Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah. First, I mean, yes, I mean, balloon it. Balloon it, then uh, if it's recoiled, I will stint it. I'll stint it, you know. Yeah. What about drug-coated balloon? Like so, drug-coated <laughs> balloon, it should... Uh, uh, a good outcome in the graft and in, uh, in the anastomosis with the graft, but in the lower limb more than uh, the AV fistula. Why? For... How, how right. was it stenosis in the arterial venous system? You know what's the difference? I mean, when you do a balloon for lower extent arterial system, why people get stenosis? And then correct? Yes, hi, yes, intimal hyperplasia. Yeah. yeah. Correct? Yes. And yes. You're going to open, you go in that directomy, correct? Yes. The reason why you do black coated balloon, because a drug can, you know, uh, stop the intimal hyperplasia. It's the whole idea from black coated balloon, correct? Yeah. Yes. But venous, when you do venous stenosis, when you, you have a patient for uh, venous outflow stenosis, when you open the graft and the vein, do you see an intimate hyperplasia? Do you see? No, no. You see it only fibrosis. Fibrosis. So, yeah. so this is more on fibrosis. It's not intimate hyperplasia. Yeah. So no benefit from DCV in that area. They don't work in the venous system, you know. And I think yeah. couple of days they do it. They try to show it help, but I'm not sure about it, you know. But so far, I don't have any strong data to us. It's a strong drug coded balloon work in venous stenosis, you know. Uh, and uh, and the reason why we really we use drug-coated balloon in the venous, you know, in a venous system, even in general, you know, the, okay. so like the normal balloon, you know, if they don't work, then you go and stent it. Yes, 
cover stent. Should you use a cover stent or an uncover stent? The Venus system, cover stent usually they don't work very well. Yeah, uncovered stent. Well, usually need a large, you know, stent, even though we have a cover large cover stent. The only time they work very well, cover stent, if you have an occlusion, not stenoclusion, you know. Uh, sometimes some studies showed in severe stenosis, proxim, but in the big vein, the central, the cover stent work better than uh, uncovered stent, you know. The reason why when you have subclavian artery, you know, stenosis or occlusions, some people study showed uh, cover stent, you know, self-expand, not balloon expandable, you know, in the vein we use a self-expandable because you need a big stent, you need to be flexible. So we don't use, uh, you know, balloon, rarely use balloon expandable stent. Uh, but the disadvantage of the covered uh, stent, also you cut all these collaterals, you know, which is a lot in the venous system. So you can look at both sides. But in general, always start with the balloon. Regular balloon, if it doesn't work, I will go to the uncovered stent, you know. Okay? Uh, yes, doctor. So we will start with balloon. But uh, how often is the balloon working? You know, they gave it like very short time. Three not months. Not, I mean, it depends, you know. But in general, it worked very well because, um, as I said, because it's a fibrosis, you break it, that's it. You know, most of the time it works very well uh, in the art. You see, it's different from the tala. Yeah, don't mix them, Muhammad, between what we do in the venous system. When we do like iliac angioplasty, uh, always we stand. We are very high uh, uh, instance of standing in the venous system. Yes. You know, we use balloon. Balloon doesn't work, it does not work in the venous system. Because the recoil and the, you know, so always you put a stand, you know, like 90% put stand. Arterial mm -hmm. is different because it's high flow. It's different from venous. It's not a venous. It's a venous, but it's like between arterial and venous. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The venous system, we do AV fistula because the high flow keeps the, fistula, the, the intervention open, you know? So, yes. so AV fistula is different from the venous. It's like between, the, it's like mixing between venous and arterial, you know? So say yes, balloon will work by itself alone, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, in the central venous system is different. The central venous system, if you have a stenosis from like, you know, from Bermacas or something like that, and you don't have a fistula or a graft, then yes, you have to put a stent. So patient comes with like uh, spira vena cava syndrome because of the central stenosis, okay? Then yes, when I below, if I just below subclavian, will come back. Then I stand subclavian. I have high tendency to stand, you know. But when I deal with the fistula and stenosis at the distal anastomosis, then I'm dealing more with the arterial venous. Then I will do more only just below angioplasty. Oh, it's great. You have to look at that different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mixed up between the central and the outflow venous. Yeah, outflow and yeah. central. And the venous is different, you know, like lower extremity venous, like iliac is different from, you know, from AV fistula, different from subclavian, you know. So mm -hmm. subclavian, superior vena cava, I'll be very liberal to with the stenting if you have a severe stenosis, if they don't respond to the ballooning. Uh, lower extremity also venous, we do a lot of stenting. In AV fistula, I uh, will do ballooning. If it's not, then I'll put a stent because the amount you would stent then you estimate that now we have intima hyperplasia because now the stent building itself will create intima hyperplasia. You see? It's different. Yeah. You get fibrosis in the stent, you get intima hyperplasia. You see? But even though yeah. now the penis stent, they don't put, they don't give antiplatelets, they give anticoagulants, you know? Because the venous system, high chance of thrombosis, so antiplatelets will not work. So usually when you do a stent in the venous system, we give anticoagulants at least for three to six months, then we put them on antiplatelets. But we want to because the, the most problem was the stent, the thrombosis wasn't like, you know, the first couple of months. If they pass this three, four months, they usually just. <coughs> so we need to be aggressive with anticoagulant first three, four months, and then you put them on something like my like antiplatelets. Okay. Clear. Thank you. So uh, A, covered stent yeah, placement, we exclude yeah. that. B yeah. is balloon yeah. angioplasty. Okay. I Go think we, we will choose that. Mm -hmm. uh, C, open revision of the venous anastomosis. I think if both A and B failed, we, mm -hmm. we choose C. Yeah. Uh, D, uh, c creation of contralateral axis. I think we'll get, uh, we'll, we'll try to consume A, B, and C, then we will choose that. 
uh, uh, e proximalization of the venous outflow above the area of narrowing. So this is also considered as the open revision. Yeah. So I will go with uh, B and A, then uh, then to choose this before. Open yeah. revision. If you try Matu Balloon, keep going back, then yes, yeah. you go. And uh, you put just, you know, you put a patch, you know, you patch mm -hmm. it. Uh, sometimes if the whole vein is gone, like it's a whole, sometimes you see the graft and then the vein is very small, like for three, four centimeters, then become big, then doesn't work. So then you go and put, you do a jump graft, that would sit in E. Then you go more further up and you do a new venous anastomosis. Okay? Is it clear? Okay. That's clear. Uh, Ali, any, any, anything you have a lot of experience, I'm sure, with AB axis. Uh, I, will, I will go with B, I think. Yeah. That's first choice. Balloning, yeah. What about drug coated balloon? Do you ever try it? You think no. it works? No, no, no. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go. Six. We go back to who? Muhammad, Ahmed. On number six. Number five. Number six. Okay, Ahmed. It's not here, Abdullah. Ahmed, me, Ahmed Radwan. Yeah, Abdullah, sorry guys. Ah, I'm ready to some I get on. Ah, I'm sure. Uh, 52, uh, 52 years uh, old woman has a well functioning left brachiocephalic uh, fistula for the past five years. She has uh, two areas of neurismal dilatation that have some skin discoloration. She has not had any wounds or bleeding. The next appropriate step is... Um, okay. Before we go, Abdullah. Uh, a, place in your... Hold just a second. Let's go. Let's go. So it's 50 years old. Trista is working very well, okay? He has an aneurysm with some skin changes, discoloration. You see, like, sometimes thinning, thinning of the skin, you know? There's no bleeding and no wound, right? And first of all, very well. Do you do anything? No, I will go with the observation. Yeah, just leave it alone. I mean, it's, the skin is fine. There's no bleeding, no wounds, you know? I see other people, they do prophylactic, you know? I saw that. I see that in the state, they do that. Because they don't want to get to the stage where the skin become and they come, you know, it's very thin. They come in the middle of the night with the bleeding. They do as prophylactic. They do an isoromectomy. Mm -hmm. But for me, I would just, but what do you do? I mean, what do you ask uh, the nurse to do? Ask them to avoid this aneurysm. This is what you should tell them to move different away from this because they keep moving this aneurysm with a needle again to get to the problem and bleeding one day, you know? And it's easy for the nurses because aneurysm is much easier. So they love to, to go and stick the aneurysm. Mm -hmm. So usually I tell, them, I tell the patient, tell the nurse not to touch the aneurysm. You have a long vein, they can puncture below, after, or before the aneurysm. But in this situation, I agree. I just leave it alone and watch him, and we'll go from there. All right. Let's go with the option. Uh, a, uh, place a new arteriopenous uh, axis. B, close observation. C, uh, place an interposition graft. D, undertake axis, axis uh, okay. location. Uh, e, place a stint graft. Yeah. Uh, I believe is uh, B is the correct answer, as you mentioned. Close yeah. observation. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you don't need a stent. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not causing any problem to you, you know, and we see that all the time in the clinic. Uh, so I'll just watch it. Any question, guys, about that? What they mean by undertake uh, uh, access application, doctor? You know, I think I need me in a repair, an aneurysm repair. I see that many times. You just go take this upper part of the skin with uh, with aneurysm as yeah. you make it smaller. So uh -huh. you, yes, aneurysm repair. Aneurysm yeah. 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 Take this part of the skin and you fix it, you know. Uh, yeah. I, again, some people I see them, they do them prophylactic, even with this scenario, because they don't want to come and wait until this bleed and they come in the middle of the night. So, but, uh, I mean, it's not wrong to do it as prophylactic, but I don't think it's a, I will not do it. I will go with this observation, you know. Okay. All right. 
observation. All right. Let's go to number seven. Uh, Ahmed Muntin. Muntin, you are there, Ahmed? Yes. Yeah, I was looking for you. Right. What's the number seven? Uh, I think the, the con uh, yes, uh, arteriovenous fistula for the past five years shows two years of aneurysmal di uh, dilation that uh, have some skin discoloration. She no, no. has not had without this one. What are you reading? I'm taking number seven. I think that the connection is, is quite, <laughs> is quite slow ah, here. Ahmed Mountain. Ahmed, Ahmed Mountain. Yes, yes, I see it, number seven, I see it now. No, uh, this is Ahmed uh, Farid. Farid, yeah, it's okay. Go ahead, Ahmed, no problem. Number seven. Number seven, please, yeah. Yes. Uh, a 50 year old man has a fade radiocephalic fistula. The mm. upper arm cephalic vein is uh, 3 millimeters in minimal diameter, and the basilic vein is 3 millimeters through the arm. The next option for access in this patient is okay. radiocephalic fistula. Before we go, I just look at the 50 years, so he's a young guy, okay? Pedro, yes. upper arm cephalic vein, three millimeters, okay? Yes, yes. Uh, and the basilic vein, three millimeters throughout, throughout the arm, meaning from the arm, yes. from the wrist all the way up, you have a good basilic vein. Yes. What next option? What do you think the best option to do with this patient? I mean, uh, a lobe, uh, a basilic lobe in the forearm. Basalic vein for loop arm. What other options? The cephalic in the upper arm. In the loop for arm. What? I didn't hear. Sorry. Why you want to do this one? Because it's it's the rule to do the most uh, distal uh, fistula as we can. Yes. Uh, and the one stage. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, without uh, superficialization as we can. Without a graft as we can. Have you done one of them? Look for arm. Uh, yes. Break a basalic in the forearm. I mean, yes, so we, we basalic. Oh, I didn't hear the last uh, the last statement. Have, I am sorry. Have you done a radio basalic in the forearm? Radio basalic. Uh, radio radio uh, basalic. No, I we done a loop with the basalic uh, vein to the to the. Brachial artery. It's a brachial artery. Yes. Not a radial artery. No, I didn't do, the, do this. Oh, you can do it. It's a radial artery. Why you have to lube it? You can do it, just mobilize it and get it to the radial artery. If it has a good radial artery. You know. Yes, uh, but, but as the situation was, the, 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 the radial artery itself was small. They did not say it's small. They said that failed radiocephalic fistula, most of the cephalic vein was small. They didn't see radio artery small. Yeah. I'm talking general, I'm not going to ask questions, I'm just saying talking in general. Many times you want the... In, in, in the case I, I have done, the, 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 the radial artery was small, so we, we, do, we, we couldn't do it to the, to the radial artery. Correct, yes. If it's small, you go to the radial artery, but remember, you have to talk to the patients. A lot of cut is different. So as you see, radius effect, big effect, small cut. So if you have a young female, yes. you have to do it for young people because you have to give them more options, you know? Will not be an old yes. So you have yes. to be careful because especially women, they may be not happy. I have many girls, I ask him, he said no. Because you're going to have three, four, five, six cut because the uh, basalic vein go most probably on the left and they go to the back of the hand, you know? And yes. a lot branches in that forearm is a lot of branches so you have to like get a lot of branches to be a lot three four cuts you know so yes. they like it so my, my idea is that if you decide to do it just talk to the patient explain to her how it's going how many things you're going to have to so be well if you want that she wake up and she has like six seven cuts and especially forehand with the woman they can see it and they may not like it you know so it's all yes yes i agree with you always we try to use the basalic and the forearm everything and then after we finish, we go up to the arm, you know. A lad at 52 is not very young, you know. Uh, most of it in real life, I will do just brachiocephalic at this guy, you know. Uh, fistula, he's 52 is not, and brachiocephalic have a nice outcome. Uh, most of it, I will do that, you know. But again, if you do a loop graph, it's not wrong at all. As I said, in AV axis, it's not, not like wrong or right. It's the way what you prefer, it, you know. But yes. So I think A would be fine. 
Uh, oh, lubograph? No, we don't think either lubograph. We have a good thing. There's no reason for that. About arm aircraft, again, it's too early. You don't need that. Basic plan position, the forearm. That's why they mentioned. But when you usually you see basic plan position, that means you go to the radar. It's not a lubograph, the way you explain it, you know. When they talk about basic yes. position, they mean you're doing basic, basic radial AV fistula. Okay? Yes. Basic transmission, yes. upper arm, this we don't do. This is as a last option, you know? Yes. All right. Any question about that? Oh, it's 8 o'clock. All right. Uh, Ali, you have any question or any, any, any comment, Ali? No, no. All right. Um, it's already 8 o'clock, guys. I won't take too much of your time. I thought we'll go faster. We can stop here. Uh, we'll talk about Ramadan, guys. I'll put that in the group. Tell me what way you like it, and they will go from there, okay? All right. Sure, doctor. Thank you. I will see you next week, hopefully. And Ramadan. Thank you. Ramadan, Karim. Right. Ramadan, Karim, everybody. Take care, guys. Enjoy your rest. Thank you. Let's put a marker here. Stop sharing. Uh,